Hi, I'm Gary Johnson. I'm a principal architect with Cambridge 7 Associates. Behind me, you see the Liberty Hotel. This is the newest hotel in our hospitality portfolio, and it's a great hotel. But more importantly, it used to be a jail, the Charles Street Jail, and now it is a four-star luxury hotel. The Liberty Hotel started its life in 1851 as the Charles Street Jail. It was designed by Gridley J.F. Bryant, one of Boston's foremost architects and the founder of something called the Boston Granite School of Architecture. You'll notice the heavy rustication of the granite and the deep recesses of the windows and of course the bars on the uh, windows. All of that was kept as part of the restoration for the Liberty Hotel, mostly because it is just a beautiful, beautiful building. My original impressions of this jail date back to the year 2000 when I first walked through with our client, Dick Friedman, Carpenter and Company, and representatives of the Mass General Hospital. I was in awe and stunned by the power of the space, but at the same time, it was very decrepit, very dirty, a little creepy, full of jail cells and bars and raw granite paint hanging off of the ceilings and the walls like stalactites and stalagmites. And it was both powerful and, frankly, very concerning to me about how to transform this into a luxury hotel product after seeing it as this hulk of a building. The granite, which was blackened in soil by 150 years of exposure to the elements, was cleaned and brought back to its present look. I'm walking through a, the portal, which was actually the entrance to the quarantine building and to the prison yard at the Charles Street Jail. Behind me, you see a remnant of the brick wall that surrounded the jail, enclosing it and enclosing the courtyard. When that wall was taken down as part of the Liberty Hotel, for the first time in 150 years, people of Boston got to see just how beautiful this magnificent building really is. The renovation of the Charles Street Jail into the Liberty Hotel was a transformative experience and project for this building. At the same time, this area of Boston was also being transformed. The new Yockey Center for Outpatient Care, also designed by Cambridge 7, provided a new entrance to Massachusetts General Hospital. The new MBTA station over my shoulder also created a new transportation hub for this area of the city. With these projects combined, this hotel creates a new gateway for the Beacon Hill area as well as an entrance into downtown Boston. One important aspect of this renovation was to restore the roofscape of the building back to the way it looked in 1851. This included placing the ventilators back on the building which had been removed, restoring the granite chimneys on the building, and finally installing a cupola which had been removed in 1949. An important aspect of the project was to let the Charles Street Jail building stand free and be visible from the streets. One way we chose to do that was to create a garden between the jail itself and what would become the new guest room tower. Our cue for that was looking towards Beacon Hill and the secret gardens of Beacon Hill using the materials of, of bluestone and grass and ground covers and small trees to create a very intimate space that could be used by the hotel for functions or by the restaurant for outdoor dining events. Separation between the old jail building and the new guest room tower is a very important concept for us. We wanted to create a transitional zone between the two, hence the glass zipper. The guest room accommodations for Liberty Hotel are split with 18 guest rooms in the old jail and 280 guest rooms in the new guest room tower. As we designed the tower, it became important to us to think of ways to make the building feel of its time and yet also make it feel compatible with the old jail. The National Park Service has a very clear mandate that additions to national monuments should indeed not try to mimic in any way, shape or form the monument itself. We did want it to pick up on some of the jail's detailing and thoughts. For instance, lower floors have steel lintels as compared to the jail's stone lintels. We have three-story windows surrounding the lower floors of the tower, very much like the three-story windows in the jail. It's a very heavy, ponderous building. I think that was actually very much intentional on Gridley Bryant's part. He made it a very mannerist building with heavy rustications, heavy coining, and heavy keystones. I think he did that to give it the weight and the substance that the subject matter at the time, i.e. a jail, demanded. Do I think it's beautiful? Yes, it's very, very, very beautiful. Do I think people ever saw it that way from 1851 on? Probably not. We're now in the arrivals lobby of the hotel. 
The arrivals lobby was once the service entrance for the building, and now it's the main arrivals experience for every guest coming to the Liberty Hotel. The first thing most people will notice is the rather intimate ceiling height in this space. Guests walk through the glass entry and become embraced by the hotel immediately. This area includes the exposed brick walls of the original 1851 jail. You'll see this restored brick throughout the hotel and guests will experience it here for the first time. One of the most dramatic features of the arrivals lobby is the mosaic tiles behind me. The mosaics have a jail theme, but the jailness of the piece is not done in a heavy-handed fashion. The mosaic is bright, colorful, and brings a bit of whimsy and life to the arrivals lobby. As we ascend the escalator, you'll notice how the ceiling heights change dramatically. We're now in the central rotunda. This is the lobby of the hotel. It is the heart and soul of this building and always has been. You'll notice over my head the wood trusses. We restored those trusses, we reinforced them to support the new cupola on the roof. But what makes this lobby special is this rotunda. Its large volume, its dimensions, it's 80 feet wide, 90 feet high, and now serves as the, a great urban lobby, or as I like to call, an urban living room within the Liberty Hotel. There are many unique things actually about the project. But one of the most powerful things that you'll see as a, as, a, as a citizen of Boston or as a passerby of the building is the cupola. Cupola was originally built with the building, but due to cost constraints, we believe, the cupola was built as a much smaller, simpler cupola. When we decided as a collective group that the cupola would be reinstated onto the building, we had to make a decision. Did you make a cupola that was exactly what was here? from 1851 to 1949? Do you make a modern interpretation of a cupola, a statement that is of this time, or did you replicate and reproduce the cupola that we see in Gridley Bryant's original sketches for the building? It was a difficult choice, and we sat with lots and lots of people. We sat with Mass the Historical Commission, we sat with Boston Landmarks, and ultimately with the National Park Service. And we all concluded that this rejuvenation and this transformation of the landmark maybe would be best if we actually completed it the way the architect had originally intended. One of the most dramatic features within this rotunda space are the windows that surround it. There are four windows on the corners of this octagonal space. The large windows are three stories tall and rather thin. The ornate round windows in the space are called oculus windows. These windows are the original 1851 windows as conceived and designed by Bryant. We think they're absolutely beautiful and create a lovely design element for the lobby. When the building was originally built, these large windows, which we've already talked about, served several different functions. These were triple hung windows, which means the top sash and the bottom sash could open, allowing for natural ventilation for this entire rotunda space. It was a very forward thinking design. Gridley J.F. Bryant was Boston's prominent architect in the 1840s. He designed numerous buildings in the city, including Boston's old city hall. He joined forces with Lewis Dwight, who was a pianologist at the time, and who had formed a plan called the Auburn Plan. The Auburn Plan was a, an approach to prison reform where prisoners would be rehabilitated rather than simply incarcerated. He and Dwight spent lots of time together talking about what that meant to a physical form of the building. And ultimately, Bryant came up with this idea that we've seen throughout the jail now. The way the cell blocks were positioned within the building, every single prisoner had equal access to views out and to light and fresh air coming in through the cells and then exhausted through the building. More important than that even, he designed a building where it could be manned by very few jailers because the way the building is shaped as a cruciform, one jailer could stand in that rotunda, which is now our lobby, and could literally look down the various wings of the cell blocks and see exactly what was going on.